Hi everybody, welcome back. And today's show is pretty cool because I am going to do a segment on a country instead of a particular person. I have a friend who is an immigrant from Sierra Leone, specifically Freetown, Sierra Leone. And about a year ago, he told me that Freetown was created by um, freed slaves or escaped slaves, uh, hence the name Freetown. So when I told him about the channel, he asked me, could I do something about Sierra Leone? And I said, sure. So today I'm going to be covering some of the history of Sierra Leone, especially Freetown, which actually is Sierra Leone's capital. Also, crazy enough, is that Freetown turned 225 years old yesterday, March 11th, uh, marked its 225th birthday. So, um, Freetown was established March 11th, 1792. And I'm just going to go a little bit further back in time in regards to Sierra Leone. It is a West African country and it was, um, actually, uh, European explorers that reached the African coast during the 15th century. Pedro de Sintra from Portugal arrived in 1462 and began to map out the hills surrounding Freetown Harbor. So Portuguese traders, as well as the Dutch and French, they quickly followed. Now Sierra Leone is rich in diamonds, gold, bauxite, rutile, uh, platinum and oil. And bauxite is used for aluminum production and rutile is an important ore of the metal titanium. It's also used as a white pigment uh, for paint, for food and other items as well as ceramic glaze and it's also used in optical equipment. So Freetown is the largest city of Sierra Leone. It was founded by British Naval Lieutenant John Clarkson, as well as freed American slaves from Nova Scotia. The Sierra Leone Company, founded by British businessman and abolitionist William Wilberforce, sought to rehabilitate the black poor of London and former slaves of America by bringing uh, these black people to the settlement in Sierra Leone, where they could stop the African slave trade. <clears throat> The first group of blacks and about 400 Londoners arrived in Sierra Leone in 1787 and established Granville Town, which is named after a British abolitionist, Granville Sharp. The settlement was destroyed by some of the indigenous inhabitants in 1789. So the British abolitionists, they sent a second larger party of 1,100 former American slaves who had been resettled in Nova Scotia at the end of the American Revolution. These settlers established Freetown in 1792, and more specifically, March 11, 1792. In 1800, 500 Jamaican Maroons were landed by the British, and Jamaican Maroons were escaped slaves in, in Jamaica who formed their own independent settlements. And one day, we will cover some of, of that as that is part of Jamaican history. So surviving Londoners, the Nova Scotians and Jamaican Maroons, they intermarried and they create a Creole population in Freetown. And these Creoles, they band together because of their Christian background, their Western culture, and also they lacked the, the tradition and native law and custom which dominated the lives of the indigenous people. The Creoles also had an important connection with British colonial officials who administered Sierra Leone from 1808 to 1961 when Sierra Leone finally gained its independence. Those connections allowed the Creoles, although they were always a tiny minority of the colony's population, they end up becoming one of the most powerful and influential influential groups after the colonial administers in the city as well as the colony. From 1808 to 1874, Freetown was the headquarters for the Royal British Navy's West African Squadron and it captured slave ships headed to the Americas and released its captured people into the city. 
And how cool is that? So really is a free town, right? Um, Freetown's population is now becoming uh, more populated from different people from all across West Africa. And eventually these people end up becoming the largest segment of the Creole population. And 1961, Sierra Leone gained its independence and Freetown with a population of 100,000 becomes officially its capital city. And after independence, it received thousands of migrants in search of jobs. These migrants become involved in the city's politics and they challenge the Creoles for dominance. Most of these migrants were Muslims and they stood in sharp contrast to the Christian Creoles who maintained control of civil service and most professions and the business community. Um, with all these different groups of people blending together, uh, Sierra Leone had managed to avoid a lot of political unrest, but that ended in 1990. And it's partly because of funding of conflicts from blood diamonds um, and continuing ethnic violence in the countryside forced a mass immigration of people into Freetown, as well as people like my friend whose mother came to this country um, as a result of the Civil War in Sierra Leone. So that is the history of Freetown and the name behind Freetown. Um, and it is officially 225 years old. I hope that um, you found this information cool and useful maybe. And if you are from Sierra Leone, I hope that you, you know, you think I did a decent job in sharing your, your country's culture and history. Well, mainly the history, sorry, not the culture. But thanks again. Um, thank you for your time. As always, please like, please subscribe and share the videos as well. I will be back again next Monday with a totally different topic. I hope to see you then. Bye.